Hi everyone, I'm back to read A Peek into the Past from 1864 from our book, Addie Saves the Day, A Summer Story, Book Five. And this part is called America Outdoors in 1864. When Addie was growing up, American cities were growing too. Immigrants from many countries poured into American cities. During and after the Civil War, many formerly enslaved people like Addie's family, moved to cities from farms and plantations. Other people, too, left their farms to move into cities. All the new people in cities needed places to live, but housing was expensive and hard to find. Many families, like Addie's, shared one or two rooms. Boarding houses and apartment buildings were often squeezed together into alleys behind them instead of backyards. Sanitation was poor in the 1860s, and in many cities, garbage and sewage were dumped into the same rivers that drinking water came from. Factory smokestacks poured dirty black smoke into the air, and many wealthy people left the crowds, sm smells, and noises of the city in the summer. They traveled to resorts to cool off. People and working class people who could not afford such trips, went to public parks to relax and to be outdoors. Families, church groups, and many clubs and other organizations had picnics, barbecues, and festivals in city parks. In many public places in Philadelphia and other cities, African Americans had to use separate areas from whites, but usually everyone could enjoy the public parks freely. Before the Civil War, public parks were usually very small squares of open land. But by the 1850s, people wanted cities to have large parks with acres of meadows, tree-lined paths, and ponds. They believed that everyone, rich and poor, could enjoy nature in these larger parks. Being close to nature would create feelings of happiness. Some people even believed that visits to parks for fresh air and sunshine could prevent diseases such as cholera and typhoid fever, which killed thousands of people each year. In the late 1850s, Americans began to build large parks right in the middle of cities. The first such park was Central Park in New York City. Other cities soon followed, including Philadelphia, which built the first public zoo in the United States in Fairmont Park. People in Philadelphia and New York still use these parks today. Some trees planted right after the Civil War are still standing in these parks. People wanted statues and monuments in their new parks too. Before the 1860s, many cities had put up statues of such national heroes as Benjamin Franklin and George Washington. At the end of the Civil War, new monuments were planned for President Abraham Lincoln as well as for important generals and admirals who had fought in the war. But for the first time, the public also wanted to build statues to honor the ordinary young soldiers who had fought and died for their country. For many years, only white soldiers were represented by these statues, even though black men fought in the Civil War too. City children sometimes played in parks. More often, they played on sidewalks, in alleys, and in empty lots near their homes because children's playgrounds were rare in Addie's time. City people also could go swimming on a hot summer month if there was a river or lake nearby. But before the 1860s, girls and women didn't go swimming very often. It was thought improper of them to swim with boys and men, and their swimsuits were like bulky dresses that covered the entire body. A few large cities built bathing houses where the men and women could swim separately indoors. And by the middle of the 1800s, city people were starting to enjoy watching sports. Large crowds of people gathered to watch track and field races and boxing, cricket, and rowing competitions. Baseball became an especially popular sport during and just after the Civil War. Baseball teams were formed in large cities and the teams traveled by railroad to games in other cities. But in the 1860s, baseball teams were segregated. 
This meant that no black person could play on a team with white players. Philadelphia's black community formed its own baseball team, the, the Pythians, who played against other teams of African-American players. When the Civil War ended, Americans began recovering from years of wartime hardship and suffering. Many Americans who had been living in slavery began looking for loved ones who were separated from them during or before the war. Families like Addie's worked long, hard hours to make new lives for themselves. Vacations were not possible, but most Americans, even city residents, found ways to relax and have fun outdoors during the summer months. All right, and that is the end of our book, Addie Saves the Day. Hope you liked it.